Okay, we are back in the pain cave. This is where all of the work happened leading into Kona. I spent nearly six weeks in these four walls doing all of my preparations. So in this video, we're gonna dive into what that looked like and why it worked so well for me. Yeah, so usually leading into Kona, I'll do a big block of work in Club La Santa, in Lanzarote, and then I'll come home and maybe do like my final week and a half, two weeks at home before flying out to the big island. This year, we'd spent a lot of time away from home. I'd had some injuries, so we decided that we'd actually base ourselves at home for the final six weeks. I've got my physio here, so I can call him up any day, go and see him straight away, make sure that anything that doesn't feel quite right, he can fix that immediately and make sure that it's not an ongoing problem, it's nipped in the bud straight away. So that was a big factor. Obviously having the dogs and the home comforts was another factor as well, but I did know that indoor training works well for me and for Kona specifically, it's not a technical bike course, so I could do a lot of work indoors and it really pay off. Aside from the swimming that I did pretty much all at the London Aquatic Centre, I did the rest of my training in these four walls. So all of my cycling, all of my running. I think during that five, six week block, I actually did two runs outside and one bike workout outside. And that was purely because the weather was really nice that day. But generally the weather isn't great here, even at the end of our summer. So I decided that in the indoor environment, it's so much more controlled. So we can whack up the heating, we can make it a bit more humid in here and every single thing that you're doing is focused and there's no freewheeling, there's no stopping at traffic lights, it's just pure work every single second. So that was one of the reasons why I felt like actually the indoor training would really pay off. Now we know that it really did. The mental training from training indoors would be really tough during the training block, but that would probably really help me in the race in Kona as well. Yeah, so I did do an Instagram post the day I was flying out to Kona where I did some stats. And on that, I said that I spent 85 hours on Zwift. Now that was across some bike workouts and some run workouts. Every single one of my bike workouts, bar about two, were on Zwift. And then most of my runs were on Zwift, but not all of them. Generally, I was spending at least three hours a day on a bike and then up to an hour or just over an hour on the treadmill. There would be about four hours a day, at least, spent on Zwift. The biggest chunk of that obviously being the bike side of things. Some of my longest workouts were over five hours on the indoor trainer, but the average was around three hours with some high intensity work and some specific intervals in there so a lot of time on Zwift unfortunately I was already level 60 so I couldn't go any more levels but I definitely found that it just helps every now and again people will pop up and be saying I'm doing a good job which just gives you that little boost as well I did a bit of a mix this time like usually I will use erg mode for everything I did a bit of a mix this time so I actually got used to being able to push the watts without being pulled to a certain cadence because I'm a very low cadence rider so I wanted to try and improve that a little bit and try and up the cadence and that was quite a big focus of the block obviously the progress that i made over the six weeks was pretty big too so i definitely owe a lot of that to being able to do my key work but in a bit more of a fun setting when you're spending 85 hours on zwift you want to make it as fun as possible 
So I guess from the very early days, indoor training has played a massive part in my journey in triathlon. I feel a lot safer training indoors. I live on the edge of London, so it's very busy here. Even training for my first ever Ironman, I did most of the riding indoors. Just to really build up that endurance, I guess. Like I'd never ridden a bike before, so I, I had a lot of progress to be made and it just really, really helped me. We definitely do blocks where we do ride outside because I don't come from a cycling background. So I almost need to refresh those skills of bike handling, descending, just being more technical. So you can't do that on the indoor trainer, but you can get incredibly strong and then take that outdoors and then work on the, the skills, which are actually really easy to learn. Like it's really difficult to get fit enough, but actually it's pretty quick to get the skills back on riding a bike. So that's why I put in the progress inside. back to my swimming days really where you're swimming and just following the black line you get mentally very very tough from doing that you spend 20 plus hours a week as a swimmer inside your own head telling yourself that like, I can do this this is tough but it's gonna make me tough that's why indoor training does work so well for me because it feels a little bit similar to being a swimmer obviously having a platform like Swift does make it a lot more fun it almost makes you feel like you are riding outside with a community but it's the same mental training when you're inside those four walls you're not going anywhere you get very good at visualizing the race course and how you're going to feel at certain points in the race for me i've done kona enough times now to almost know how i'm going to feel at each point in the race it becomes very easy then to visualize that what are you going to tell yourself in that moment what are you going to say when you're struggling a lot of that comes back to then remembering the work that i did in the pain cave and knowing that it's going to pay off when i get to the race and get to that difficult point on the bike it becomes easier to to pull yourself out of those dark moments. <laughs> who's not used Swift or is very new to it, there's so many different ways you can use the platform. The most straightforward one, just jumping on and riding and having other riders around you to kind of maybe, oh, let's see if I can keep with that rider for as long as possible, or they have different segments on there so you can see how you stack up to other riders. Also, there's group rides, there's races. If you've got a specific workout that a coach is setting you, you can actually upload that into the platform and follow your workout to a T, easily adjust adjusting the numbers if you're feeling particularly good or you're feeling tired. So it's just a really fun and user-friendly platform that can be used from the real beginner all the way to the top pros in the world. And you will see triathletes, cyclists, newbie cyclists. It's an incredible place to go and train. We are also looking to really push our Team Charles Barclay Club. Have you guys riding with us more specifically during the off season where we're doing quite a lot of training on the indoor trainers, the Wahoo Kickers, the Wahoo Bike, and we wanna be able to have a bit more fun with our community while we're in a little bit of a less structured training block. I was doing the block of training for Kona this year. It was really, really tough. I didn't miss a workout. I was fully committed. I was up at 5 a.m. I was training all day. And I was questioning, is it worth it? Is it gonna pay off? Because it was very, very tough. But now sat here, world champion in the fastest time ever in Kona. I think it was a million percent worth it. It clearly worked and I would definitely do it again. I think you have to consider the course that you're racing on. So for Kona, riding indoors is absolutely fine. For a course like the Ironman World Championships in Nice, yes, you'll get very strong from riding on Zwift and riding on the Wahoo, but actually you would need to go and recce the course and get confident there. So it's a balance. It's always a balance with anything, but actually riding outdoors, you get different skills. But from being a beginner, and if you really want to make the progress in your endurance, the best place to do that is on Zwift, on the indoor trainer. Okay, 
a massive thank you for watching this video. That's a bit of an insight into how my Kona block worked. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. We are really trying to get Holly to that 100K. She puts so much effort into this channel, so we would appreciate it so much if you click subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to stay tuned and keep your eyes peeled as we really are trying to push our Team Charles Barclay Club on Zwift. If you haven't already, go and join that. And if you would love to see a bit of a new Pain Cave tour, we're gonna be upgrading in here pretty soon. So if you'd like to see that, comment below and let us know what you'd like to see and maybe some more insights into our training in here.